Traveling around the country, World Energy is searching for natural resources. Today, we're looking for oil. Welcome to World Energy Television. Today, we're in Luling, Texas, visiting with George Stapleton and his crew as they bring a new, an old well back to life. George, thanks for having us out. Pleasure, Richard. So what are we doing today? We're testing ERA3, which is a silicon-based chemical manufactured by Silicon Solutions. Uh, we've been doing testing in the Austin Chalk to see if we can produce additional oil from wells that are either no longer producing or producing in very, very small, uneconomic quantities. Well, tell me about the Austin Chalk. Austin Chalk is a formation between 1,900 to 2,500 feet, about 400 feet thick. It's a fractured carbonate, uh, heavily fractured. It has a light oil in it, about 37 API. It was produced back in the 60s and 70s. They probably produced about 150 million barrels of oil from the Austin Chalk in its heyday. Uh, there's probably another one and a half to two billion barrels of oil wow. still locked in the formation. So to the extent that we can bring wells back to life, there's a significant amount of oil that has not been produced that may be producible. Uh, the reality is they've only produced about six or seven percent of the original oil in place. So again, if we were able to produce an extra three percent, that could be another 50 to 75 million barrels of oil. So it's a huge opportunity. It's a huge opportunity. We've been testing the chemical on some wells here in the chalk. What we've seen so far is that after treatment with the chemical, and the treatment cost is not that expensive, it's about $2,000 of treating cost, we're seeing about a five-fold increase in production. So we're taking wells that were producing half a barrel a day, one barrel a day, if they were producing at all, uh -huh. and we're producing between four and six barrels a day of oil. Uh, the chemical that we're using is totally non-toxic. We're mixing it with water. Uh, we're using a hot oiler to deliver it because we want to put it in the well at about 180 degrees, maybe a maximum of 200 degrees Fahrenheit. That enhances the chemical's ability to break loose paraffins and asphaltines that might be blocking the perforations in the well bore, clean up the well bore. Uh, the first thing the chemical does really is clean up the inside of the well bore mm -hmm. and then it gets out into the formation where we believe it's cleaning up the fracture planes within the chalk, opening up new pathways within the Austin Chalk formation, which is how it's allowing additional oil to be produced. What we've seen is that generally the wells will in fact go on vacuum, so the formation will take Suck all of the chemical out into the formation. In fact, we've seen chemical on the polish rods of pumps a thousand feet away within 15-20 minutes. So it's, really? it's getting into the fracture planes and it's cleaning up a lot of the clay fines and other things that seem to be over the 20-25 year production history mm -hmm. plugging up the, uh, the flow pass for the oil. Rod, how long have you been working in this region? I've been here uh, since 1989. So quite a while. Yes sir. How many Austin chalk wells have you worked on? Oh, at one point I had 452 wells. You personally my own. had four, 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 Wow. Mm -hmm. So and what's the like chalk like? Well, the, the chalk is a is a formation that, that's fractured. It's got a, um, it's difficult to get the oil out because it absorbs. It's kind of like back in your kindergarten days when you take a piece of chalk and you stick it in some dye and it sucks up into the chalk it's hard to get it back out of there mm -hmm. and we have tried for years different chemicals different technologies trying to get this chalk to release the oil that's locked up inside and we have had no success at all um, ever seen anything like this before? We have, I have never seen anything like this. Um, I was very skeptical at first, but now um, I've done, uh, oh, what, seven, eight wells, eight wells. This is the eighth one. And um, every one of them has increased the production anywhere from three to five and a half barrels a day after it settles down. It comes up a little higher than that, but when it settles out, three to five and a half barrels a day. 
even if you get a half barrel a day to a three barrel a day or three and a half barrel a day, that's a significant difference. So if you take that and multiply it, like you said, times 100 wells, now you're talking about a lot of production. The cost of doing it is so cheap compared to any of the other technologies I've tried to get that kind of return. And if you can get it, not for a short haul, but for the long term, if you can get three to five months out of that treatment and you spend less than $2,000 to do it, that is significant. How many wells out here are candidates for it? Oh man, we probably got eight, nine thousand in this just this area. I've been involved since May of last year, May of 2009. I acquired all rights to the chemical and took over the ownership and mm -hmm. marketing, patent development, and so forth for the chemical. Okay. Well, what can you tell me about it? What is it? It is a silicon polymer. It's basically manufactured from 99.9% uh, .9 pure silicon. Mm -hmm. It acts as a surfactant, so it acts almost like a soap. It is a wetting agent. So in the formation, for example, in the Austin chalk here, it will go in and both clean up the fracture planes within the, the carbonate formation mm -hmm. and liberate oil from the rock. So in other words, it, it helps make it easier for the oil to release itself from the rock and flow towards the well bore where it can be pumped to the surface. What's the difference between this and soap? This will not create soap bubbles. Mm -hmm. um, it does not saponify, as, as the term is. It, it does not create emulsions like soap can do. Okay. Um, it is more of a pure wetting agent, uh, creating a, uh, reducing the interfacial tension between the oil and the rock. And this is what it comes in? This is a 55 gallon drum. Um, it comes in this or in 275 gallon totes. For the wells here, we're typically doing about 130 oil field barrel treatment at 42 gallons a barrel. Okay. So 55 gallons of um, ERA3 is a 1% solution of the chemical in fresh water if you do two full hot oiler loads. So you've got 130 oil field barrels, which is roughly 5,600 gallons of water uh -huh. with 55 gallons of ERA3, you've got roughly a 1% solution. So you really don't need very much of this to make it work? No, no. In, in most of its applications, we're using a 1% solution. So right now, you've worked it out on the Austin chalk wells. Do you see this as being applicable elsewhere? I think it has application certainly to any carbonate. Uh -huh. I'm talking with some companies in Canada about using it in some of the bitumen carbonates up there, the heavy oil carbonates. Uh, major carbonate fields throughout the world could benefit from it. I think it would make for a very good component of, say, an alkali surfactant polymer flood because mm -hmm. it is an alkali. Even at 1%, it has a pH of 10. Um, in raw form, undiluted form, it's a pH of 14. So it does act like an alkali, but it is much safer to handle than the typical alkalis. Mm -hmm. It's non-toxic. Mm -hmm. I can put my finger in it, even though it's a pH of 14, with no, no problem. So much safer to use than a lot of the alkalis that are currently employed mm -hmm. and has a beneficial effect. So on a water flood, for example, that was using an ASP approach, I think this would be a good chemical to try. Now, on this particular site, you got three wells, is that accurate? There's three wells here. The well over there, we did the ERA-3 treatment on, so the only well pumping right now is making five, five and a half barrels a day, and it's been consistent at that. Mm -hmm. It was making a barrel a day, roughly three quarters to one and a quarter barrels a day, so we'll call it a barrel a day average, and then we did the ERA-3 treatment, and then we got it up to five and a half barrels a day and it did that for several months. The first time you applied it to a well, what was the experience? The f first thing that happens every time you put it in there, the well goes on a vacuum. Once it's reached its point, as far as it's going to go, as gravity is going to take it out and allow that weight to push it out, it starts releasing oil and gas. And when it does, it starts pressuring up and starts coming back to you. It's, it's trying to get out of the well. The gas is trying to rise. So when it comes back to the well, once I start seeing a blow on the well, mm -hmm. where the gas is starting to come out, it's not sucking anymore, it's blowing, then I go ahead and turn it on. It's ready. Fluid is high enough. When it starts blowing, it's got enough fluid to the pump that we can go ahead and pump it. 
usually the first four or five days you'll see water. That's because the gas and oil is out there and it's pushing the water out. If you leave the well closed in too long, what will happen is it'll build a lot of pressure. And every one of these wells I've treated has increased the pressure drastically. That one went up to 200 pounds of pressure, which some areas that doesn't sound like a lot. But when you're talking an average field of 60 pounds of pressure That's and you're getting it up to 200 pounds of pressure and the only thing you've done is put the ERA-3 in the ground, mm -hmm. that's significant. The other thing it's done is it's raised the fluid level. But we found that if you move it faster at the start and start pulling it real hard, then you start, it opens it up even more and, and you really get a really good production with that. And I'm not talking about just getting a flush production for a day or or two or a week. I'm talking about production for months. Dan owns the property that we're actually drilling on and applying the chemical ERA-3. Dan, how long you been in Texas? 87 years. Wow. That's a long time, isn't it? <laughs> sure is. A long time, yeah. I was raised in East Texas and came here in this part of the country in 64 and I bought this place here in 66 and the when, when did they start producing oil? They put, started producing oil in 1980, and then it turned into water, and they quit, and it's hadn't been producing now for eight or ten years. So, Well, Dan, I'm glad to see your well has come back to life. We got that one producing. The one behind us should be producing soon, and I know they got at least two more they're going to be working on. Yeah. That's, that's good. That's good for them and good for us. We, we're proud for them and proud for us. We can all, all use a little extra money. <laughs> I'm standing here with George Stapleton again. And of course, we're in front of another one of the um, Austin chalk wells out here in Luling, Texas. George, I know when they add the ERA-3, it's going to go after new oil. But tell me what that means to a well like this. Well, the, the typical well in the Austin chalk has been drilled on a, a two and a quarter, two and a half acre spacing. And on the average pay thickness, richness of the reservoir and whatnot, that means that it should access roughly 325,000 barrels of oil in place. Again, the typical well here, before it got down to stripper well status, has produced about 20,000 barrels. So if you figure 20,000 on 320,000, about 6%, a little, more, little less than 6%. There's still over 300,000 barrels of oil that this well bore theoretically could access. Now, you're never going to produce all of the oil in place. Mm -hmm. But if we can just increase the recovery by 50% on each well over what it's already recovered, mm -hmm. take it up to 9% of the oil in place, we would produce an additional 10,000 barrels of oil per well. There's 5,000 wells in the Austin Chalk. So you're talking potentially 50 million barrels of oil at just recovering an additional 3% of the oil in place. There's about 2 billion barrels of oil in place in the Austin Chalk here regionally. So, you know, what we're trying to do is see if we can take it beyond a 50% improvement. Maybe we can double it. Maybe we can do better than that. The Austin Chalk was discovered in 1922. As we leave today, this well, which has been offline for 10 years, is coming back to life with the help of chemical ERA-3 and this guy with his crew running pipe. I'm Richard Loomis for World Energy Television and thank you very much for watching.